Welcome to the Tarby Depot. In 1891, the brand new building served as the first glimpse of Clovis for visitors to the area. Today, well over a century later, the original building still gladly welcomes visitors from around the world as the Clovis Tourist and Information Center at Tarby Depot. Back in the late 1800s, the Central Pacific Railroad connected the United States from east to west. What used to take eight months by covered wagon across the plains or by sailing around Cape Horn was achieved by rail in a matter of days. Soon there were several smaller feeder lines throughout California. And by the spring of 1872, the branch that served the San Joaquin Valley, the Southern Pacific Railroad, began to operate trade routes. As the Southern Pacific Railroad grew, so did the mistrust between local farmers and the railroad company. The Southern Pacific often became known as the Octopus, a powerful organization with many business interests and the ability to squeeze the life out of anything that got in its way. It was during this period, in the late 1880s, that wealthy Fresno businessman Thomas Hughes began looking for an alternative to the mighty Southern Pacific. Early in 1889, he met with a 26-year-old Chicago Railroad developer, Marcus Pulaski. The two men began to plan the details of building a railroad that would travel from Fresno to the Sierra Nevada Timber Belt on the east side of the San Joaquin Valley. The San Joaquin Valley Railroad Company was born. They immediately went to work on obtaining the land on which to build their new railroad. Clovis M. Cole, a successful grain farmer northeast of Fresno, sold a right-of-way along his property line. Because of this, Pulaski and Hughes named the site of a newly planned town, Clovis Station, after Cole. In 1892, during the construction of the railroad, two depots were constructed in what is now the city of Clovis. Clovis Station, near the corner of 4th Street and Clovis Avenue, was used primarily for shipping freight, and the Tarpey Depot, located southeast of Ashland and Clovis Avenues, served as a passenger station. In 1893, the entire nation slid into a depression. Declining prices affected the area's grape and grain markets and production. Freight and passenger volumes failed to reach anticipated levels, and the railroad suffered a loss in its first year of operation, resulting in its bankruptcy. The Southern Pacific also saw a sharp decline in its earnings. But the railroad giant recognized an opportunity when it saw one. It bought out the failing independent railroad by purchasing it for pennies on the dollar. The San Joaquin Valley Railroad Company was no more. In 1897, fire destroyed the Clovis Station Depot, leaving the Tarpey Depot as the last surviving piece of evidence from the little railroad company that once had the heart and determination to take a David versus Goliath stance against the mighty Southern Pacific. By 1911, the Tarpey Depot building had become a post office and was used as an office for an adjacent vineyard. In the 1940s, the building was moved across the street and used as a real estate office for the new Tarpey Village housing tract. In the early 1960s, the building was moved 15 miles away to Kearney Park in southwest Fresno, where it was to be part of a Pioneer Village attraction. The village plans never materialized and the building sat, boarded up and falling into disrepair for 32 years. Meanwhile, the city of Clovis began to grow at a tremendous pace. Back in 1960, the city of Clovis's population was 5,500 people. By 1970, 22,000 people called Clovis home, and by 1990, there were 50,000 people living in the town of Clovis. But the hubbub and clatter of all these people didn't change the way one woman felt about her hometown. Susie Osterberg grew up in Clovis. As an adult, she and her husband Fred owned and operated Osterberg's Mercantile, a large antique store located on the northwest corner of Clovis Avenue and 5th Street. Susie had a passion for old things that harkened back to slower, simpler times. She also had a passion for her little town of Clovis. Susie often reminisced about the innocent and unhurried years she experienced growing up in Clovis. She also reminisced about the old Tarpey Depot. By the early 1990s, Susie had developed a plan to return the old Tarpey Depot back to its rightful place in the Clovis community. She made it her personal mission to see the building fully restored 
and appreciated by all citizens and visitors alike. Susie relentlessly campaigned to achieve her mission, even in the face of great opposition and naysayers. But along the way, she made allies as well, people that shared in her enthusiasm and her vision. Folks like City of Clovis Community and Economic Development Director Mike Dozier, Planning and Development Services Director John Wright, and Assistant City Manager Jeff Whitty. But it wasn't until she met Dwight Kroll, a 41-year-old city planner, that her dreams started materializing. It was an unlikely team. Dwight wasn't from Clovis. He grew up in Southern California. He had never experienced Clovis until 1981, but he understood the importance of the Tarpy Depot and shared Susie's eagerness. At the same time, the city of Clovis entered into a deal with the Southern Pacific Railroad Company to purchase property that was no longer being used for trains. The transaction included a narrow strip of property that ran alongside Clovis Avenue from the city limits near Dakota Avenue north through Old Town. This acquisition made it possible for redevelopment to occur on the east side of Clovis Avenue between 4th and 5th Streets. Soon, commercial real estate and hotel developers became interested in the property. As their plans took shape, so did Susie's. She continued to work with Dwight. Together, they solidified a plan and assembled a team of volunteers and professional contractors. And they continued to gather the support of the community. Soon the campaign for moving the Tarpy Depot back to Clovis became a citywide objective. By 1997, the construction of the Clovis Coal Hotel was well underway and by August of that year, the city of Clovis struck a deal with the Clovis Big Dry Creek Historical Society for the use of a small piece of property that was adjacent to the driveway of the new hotel. The lease, one dollar per year. Finally, the depot had a new home. To raise money for the project, the Historical Society sold sponsorship bricks that would eventually pave the courtyard next to the building. Community members became partners in the project as they bought up bricks in record numbers. In October, Susie and Dwight formed another valuable partnership. Lanco Construction had heard about the plans for the relocation of the Tarpy Depot and asked to participate in the project. Vince LaNovara, Cheryl Withrick, and Gary Miller donated countless hours as they began the arduous process of relocating and rehabilitating the 105-year-old building. As it turned out, the building was in much worse shape than anyone had expected. The walls and the floors were no longer connected to each other, the windows were broken or missing, the roof was collapsing, and the distinctive prominent decorative finial was missing. Needless to say, there was much work to be done. On May 8, 1998, an official groundbreaking ceremony was held to signal the beginning of a tough job that in order to complete would ultimately require the support of the entire community. As it turned out, the cooperative spirit of Clovis came easily. Over the next year, the business community, local citizens, and City of Clovis employees donated their time in moving and helping restore the building, installing landscaping, building a new restroom facility, and installing new benches, walkways, and ornamental features. On Thursday, November 20, 2000, the Clovis Tourist and Information Center at Tarpy Depot once again opened its doors and greeted the public, serving as a testament to the vision of Susie Osterberg and the community spirit that Clovis represents. Today, just as they did back in 1893, visitors to Clovis can discover a fantastic array of activities and events going on in the area. By starting their journey at the Tarby Depot, they are sure to find a wealth of information, from bike trails to street fairs, from restaurants to local historic sites, from schools to hotels. Everything anyone needs to know. This is the Tarby Depot. This is Clovis. <laughs>